Hi, and welcome to Achieve with Karolina Live. I'm Karolina Romanyuk, your child and family sleep specialist, and I help parents to get a good night's sleep and to understand their children's sleep needs better. If you want to find out some more information, please join um, or please sign up to my website, achievewithkarolina.com. And you can find lots of free goodies on there. I attached a free guide on um, tonight's video so you guys can look into it. So hi everyone. I'm seeing that we're getting a lot of viewers and we just signed on. Hi Angelica. So tonight what we're going to be talking about is one main reason and why, why your child doesn't sleep at night and that is simple because most people don't know the difference between tired versus overtired cues. So I know I talked about this briefly before. I, uh, there was a question on, on um, one of the forums and I spoke about that, you know, like kind of just brought it up and gave like a couple of pointers. But um, I wanted to go a little bit more into detail with that today. So, you know, before we get into this video, Angelica, how was your day? How is everyone's day today? I want to give a couple of minutes before we start chatting away. Did you start with your tasks on, um, you know, did you finish the one from last week? Did you do the one that I mentioned yesterday on asking your significant other on a date? I actually did. So we <laughs> are going to have one on this Sunday. And I will be, if he allows me, I'll be posting pictures of that. So um, let's see, what else? Uh, today was kind of an interesting day for me. My no date yet. You better get cracking on that, Angelica. So uh, my older one is um, sick. He's under the weather. So I've been home with him today. And it's, you know, it's interesting being a mompreneur, mompreneur running a business and then having your little one home with you when you're trying to do business calls. So <laughs> it's kind of a Something fascinating on that part. It worked out very well. Thank goodness he's, um, you know, he's gonna get better. We went to the doctor today, so I'm happy on that part. And um, I got a lot of work done, so I was happy. Pretty good, productive day today. And um, one of the things that just started bringing it up is that you know today was kind of gloomy weather. There were, it was raining, so usually in really crappy weather like that you just want to sleep all the time and you kind of miss your child's cues when they're tired so it started getting me thinking that might be a really cool topic to do today on knowing the difference between tired versus overtired cues hi Anna thanks for joining so if you know of anyone that is um, experiencing a really what's the word um, excited over energized toddler or child that is one indication that they are not getting proper sleep so what I would really love for you to do right now is to share this video just click share right below please do that like this video and I want to have as many parents on tonight as possible so we can get this conversation it's really important to know the difference between tired versus overtired cues so before in my training i really didn't even know the difference i just figured tired versus overtired is just when your baby's yawning and then when they have a meltdown that's it so i figured as it being all in one shot hi jane thanks for joining so i love seeing my regulars now um what I, you know, during my training, we went into the hardcore of it and we started like, you know, going through the pieces and I started to realize and understand that there's a huge, huge difference between both factors and I wanted to share that with you because that could really make or break your sleep. Of course, there are other components such as the schedule, uh, any type of associations that your little one might have, but knowing the difference between tired versus overtired cues, especially when they're young, can really help you significantly. So um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to type them in. Make sure to share this video, please, so we can get you know more of your friends on here. And I will answer the questions once I'm done giving you lovely tips on tonight's chat. So everyone that's signing on right now, what we're gonna be talking about tonight is one main reason and why your child is 
not sleeping through the night and that is mainly that you don't know the difference between their tired cues versus overtired cues hey yay you joined so okay to get started do you know the difference do you know what a tired cue looks like let me ask this I want to find out so someone type in yes no So Angelica says, a couple of times I thought I saw a cue that my son was uh, tired and I would try and put him to sleep and then I realized it took longer than usual because I guess maybe he wasn't tired in reality. Okay, so Anna, you're saying yawn, I rub. Jane, what do you think it is? I love this. When I put him down at his usual time, there is no problem. Okay, so Angelica, so you have a perfect time then, so you know that. Jane says she's hysterical, clingy, can't sit. Okay, so Jane, what you're experiencing is overexhaustion. That's way past, you know, just being overtired when they start to actually showcase emotions within that. So a tired cue means simply that your child is not um, interested in what they're doing, that they're kind of really chilled out, they're relaxed, they might be staring into space, they might not be paying attention or, or interested in any type of a toy, and they are just really, you know, relaxed, just kind of spaced out, so to speak. That is, for us, we take that as a cue oh my God, they're actually not doing anything right now. I can you know, go to the bathroom, I can go get something to eat, I can go sit down, I can do something. So if you notice around the time when it's nap time for your little one, it could be within a half an hour, it could be you know, within 20 minutes of that time frame when you know that it's your little one's time to go to sleep, they might start showing those cues that they are tired. So they would be really relaxed, just you know, spaced out. And then in some cases, you can have as little as five minutes, and I'm being very serious, it can be for some kids as little as five minutes to go from tired to over exhaustion. And then when your little one goes into over exhaustion, there's no looking back from there. There is nothing you can do to calm them down. All you can do is wait out that period with them and wait until their adrenaline, their cortisol level, which is their stress level, just kind of depletes and then they go back into the cycle of melatonin. That can take anywhere between 45 minutes to close to an hour of you just waiting it out. So not knowing the difference between your child's tired cues versus overtired cues can really make or break your sleep. And that's when most parents, they start to feel as though it takes forever for me to put my little one to sleep. It takes me an hour. It takes me 45 minutes. You know, no matter what time I put them down to sleep, they just don't fall asleep. So knowing the difference between tired versus overtired for everyone that's signing on right now is crucial to understand that. Keeping a sleep diary is very important. Sh writing down what cues you see closer towards bedtime or closer towards nap time that your child does. They're not always the same per child. Yes, there are um, generalized features um, such as the tired cues, what I mentioned to you, were not physical features. So if they're rubbing the eyes, if they're pulling the ears, some kids, they like to lie down on the floor. Um, what else? Do they, they yawn. Those are physical features. So when you see something like that, that means that they're already heading into over exhaustion stage and you don't want that to happen. You want to hit those points before they start to show you that they're actually tired, that they're yawning, that they're rubbing their eyes because you can literally have five minutes, like I said, and I actually timed this with one, to with one infant that I was sleep training. And how long does this actually take? So for her, it literally was five minutes on the clock. Some kids, it could take 10 minutes or 15 minutes, but that's usually a maximum that a child can go from tired to overtired. And then when they're overtired, they're, you know, they get a boost of energy, some, some kids, that they are start bouncing off the walls, that they don't know what to do with themselves, that they're really jacked up on adrenaline. And some kids, if they don't do that, if they're not that hyped up on adrenaline, they are not, you know, relaxed or um, just chilled out like adults would be if we are not getting out of the 
Oops. Sorry, that's my husband trying to do the dishes. So, <laughs> I hope you didn't break anything. Okay, uh, so <laughs> the factor that, yeah, glossy eyed is also um, one indication, so that's cool. And now, if your child is being very um, overactive, that means that they are really, really exhausted too. So you have most likely waited or it surpassed that time when they were just tired and then you could put them down beautifully to sleep. You would have to wait until the next window for them to fall asleep. Sometimes what that happens is, for an example, you put your little one down to eight, but then they're tired at 7.15 or 7.30. You figure, oh my God, no, they can't go to bed that early. You know, I, I can push it a little bit. I haven't seen them for a while. I wanna hang out with my little one and then a half an hour passes next thing you know they're in adrenaline rush and then it's like 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night and then that's when they fall asleep so you don't want that to happen you want to hit the point when they're just tired when they're really just chilled out relaxed don't go pee don't go to the bathroom don't get something to eat you take your child and put them to bed because that is the perfect time when melatonin hits its peak that is their sleep hormone and you can actually put them to bed without any type of a tantrum. So, of, of course, if they have an association and you're also not putting them down at the proper schedule, you can still have a couple of um, you know pieces that are bumping heads. But one of the main components is making sure that you're putting them down when they're tired and not overtired. So one of the routines, one of the two solutions that I wanted to talk to you about is a pre-sleep routine, that's one, and then two is keeping a diary. So you already know I really am for journaling, for keeping a diary, for keeping track, keeping patterns. You already do that, especially when your little one was an infant, on keeping their poop diary, their feeding diary, and you did their sleep. Um, but probably not as much as you know their bodily functions and stuff like that. So what you would want to do is keep a sleep diary as well. A sleep diary will really help you significantly, especially to help you understand your child's tired cues. You need to know them. Every child is different. I've had one mom, she was unbelievable and uh, in a good way. <laughs> and she just told me that she really couldn't uh, figure out what her child's tired cue was. And she said that she swore that her child just didn't have one, just did not have a tired cue whatsoever. So one time I told her to pay close attention, very close attention to the time that they were falling asleep for their nap and for a bedtime and you know like approximately that clock schedule and watch their body just watch what they do because um she later found out that her child's big toe would cross over on their feet and then right after that a couple of minutes later he went into overtired state and you don't want that to happen so every child is different it could be just as minimal as something like that that you won't even notice unless you're really paying attention to it so know your child's tired cues every child has approximately the same type of over exhaustion because they'll throw tantrums they'll start crying for no well not for no reason it's just because they're exhausted and then that's when we as adults we have our tantrums and we flip out and saying why are you not quiet why are you screaming be quiet right now stop crying why don't you go to sleep go to sleep right now you know the most popular uh, parenting quotes when you're flipping out and having your parenting tantrum so we want to avoid two tantrums one is yours and one is your child's so we want to keep it nice and calm and cool and collected right give me a thumbs up if you guys agree so what we want to do is know your child's tired cues now this what are you doing over there <laughs> Okay, so you want to know, you want to have your pre-sleep routine. That is very important. And your pre-sleep routine is part of knowing your child's tired cues. So you have your routine and then you have your pre-sleep routine. So what that means is prepping the environment, maybe um, chilling out the household. So maybe right before bedtime, you were watching cartoons. Well, not like an hour before because you already know I um, blue light 
is a no-no any type of electronics is a no-no an hour before bedtime but let's say you were playing music you were dancing you were having like a jams and you were having a lot of fun and then you have to kind of calm your child down to go to sleep so how would you do that what would you do you would create then a pre-sleep routine something that would get you from that really excited state that you were in to a more mellowed out um, way of about to fall asleep so once you're going from your pre-sleep routine into your routine then is bedtime and then everything is beautiful and serene for sleep so body temperature is key when you're also doing a pre-sleep routine so for an example let's say your pre-sleep routine is a bath that that you don't do every single day so that would I would consider that a pre-sleep routine because you know you're not doing it every day but it's still part of something either you're wiping you're washing your little ones tushy from the day or you're actually giving them a full-blown bath or you know just cleansing their body you're not washing their hair or anything like that so um, body temperature is something important as well because when we sleep our body temperature kind of drops and then when we uh, when we're about to wake up it increases so when it increases we wake up automatically because our body goes into a heat mode with that so after a bath you would want to put socks on your little one for them to be nice and comfy and to regulate their body temperature really quickly because you don't want them to be cold if they're cold then that increases your stress level so you don't want that to happen so socks are a really important key factor in when you're applying either a routine or a pre-sleep routine and the second solution like I mentioned was a sleep diary so those are my tips for you today and that is what I wanted to really talk to you about understanding the difference between tired versus over tired cues in knowing your child when they are about to fall asleep what kind of cues do they showcase for you and that doesn't mean rubbing their eyes because that is already going into over exhaustion state now again remember if your child and I get this asked a lot I actually get two two quotes that I'm going to tell you that I get often and I see often repeated over and over and over again the first one is well I feel bad putting my little one to sleep if it to bed if they are not tired right that's one and then two is I come home late and I just want to spend some time with them so I feel guilty putting them to bed so early your child's sleep is priority so remember yesterday's video how I was talking about there is no health if there is no sleep. So if you're keeping up your child and you are taking away the quantity and quality of sleep that they need, and what's happening is that they're going into kind of a jet lag syndrome for the following day. So you know when you're not getting enough sleep, you're kind of hazy, you're not fully there, fully in the moment. Imagine what your little one is going through. So we don't want that to happen. If you do come if you do work late and you do come home, one way to help with that is you go to bed early so then in the morning when your little one wakes up fully refreshed right before work you can have ample time with them you can have a morning routine with them that's something that I always recommend for my families to do because you don't want to deprive your child of the proper quality and quantity of sleep that they deserve that they need that you need also because remember the end of the day you want everyone in your household to be sleeping beautifully. You want you to be sleeping beautifully as well as your little one to be sleeping beautifully. So you really need to treasure their sleep and you need to really treasure your sleep. So knowing their tired cues versus their overtired cues is a very significant factor in that. I also added on here a link to my free sleep guide. I want you guys to use it. It will tell you approximately how many hours your little one needs to sleep. It also gives you tips depending on what age that they are in, on the type of milestones. So little tidbits, you know, things that I go through in the videos with YouTube, but it's kind of in writing. So it's a free sleep guide. Just check it out. It's, you know, free. I want you to use it and share it if you like and comment if you want. Let me know if you have any questions. So now what I'm going to do is I'm seeing we're getting a lot more people. If you guys have any questions, type in. So I'm going to start to answer them. Okay. <laughs> mm. 
Okay. So I answered Jane's. Anna, rub eyes and a tantrum. Yeah, so Anna, you know that... Um, Sharab, Anna Sharab. So you know that rubbing eyes and a tantrum is already over exhaustion. That's not a tired cue. That's already when they're over tired. Jane says, I literally am flying home. I can't get home before 6.45 and then rush to get him to a bath and then bedtime. So Jane, if you are hitting the perfect points within sleep, and I know I get that too because my kids go to um, daycare as well, and then you get home, it seems as though when you wake up in the morning, the first thing that you're thinking about is nighttime. How am I going to get to bed on time? So if you are having trouble or um, it's kind of missing out of the routine that you can't get home on time. And let's say you your child has a nanny, have the nanny do the pre-sleep routine so then you can do the routine. If they are in daycare, maybe you can give an extra meal so then that they could feed your little one or change them into pajamas depending on the time that you're coming home. So then you can kind of you know, go straight into the routine with them when you come home so you're not wasting time. So I've had that happen with some families, especially if they have siblings. So that's something really cool that you can look into. Um, Angelica says, but it's 9 p.m. the earliest, so I tried earlier and it didn't really work. So Angelica, 9 p.m. is really late. Um, what you would do is you can start 15 minutes earlier every other day to get to their key point. I don't want you telling me that I've tried different times because trying different times doesn't mean anything. If you do not keep a diary and you do not have balanced times, remember, we want to balance out time. I don't want you thinking that nighttime sleep is completely separate from the daytime because it's not. It's a, it's a continuation of it. It's a part of Day sleep is a part of night sleep. They they go hand in hand. So I don't want you thinking that, oh my God, if I'm rocking my little one during the day, if I'm holding them during the day, if I'm feeding them during the day, breast you know breastfeeding them while they're about to fall asleep, that at night they're going to be sleeping beautifully without needing me. That's not going to work that way. So your little one, they are really, really smart and they understand patterns really quickly. So the patterns that you are instilling in them is what they understand now if you want to change a pattern you have to figure out a way that is go you're going to achieve those goals and how are you going to detach from the pattern that you're used to right now and create a new one and that's where I come in I help with that and I provide the solutions and the results for you guys so if you are having trouble in putting a plan together for yourself and you've already tried it you've exhausted all of your options or you haven't tried anything yet but you really are not getting any sleep and you don't know what to do feel free to contact me and we can do a free introductory call so I can get you on the right steps of that so either you could private message me you could email me at it's me at achieve with Karolina.com you can go on my website to uh, do the contact button on there and again like I said you can contact me through private message or my Facebook page so it's a lot of ways that we can get in touch with each other so let's see who else has uh, questions Hi, Esther. Okay, so Anna uh, Sharov, you are saying, are you saying <laughs> that if it's taking you a while to put a baby to sleep, that's probably because you've missed your window? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. So you've missed their window. Um, you've missed their tired window, so they're overly exhausted. That is majority of the case. Again, you need to make sure that their sleep is balanced from their naps, from their morning, to their naps, to their bedtime. Sometimes, you know, bedtime can literally be as early as 5.30 for some kids. And I've had that happen. I've had it happen as early as five, even 4.30 one time, because there were no naps, the child needed these naps, and we were putting them together in place. So if your little one is having horrific naps and having multiple night wakings because they go hand in hand, the first thing that really starts to go into place is nighttime, and then naps start to follow after. And that takes time, so you need to really have patience for this. And becoming a parent, we know that you need lots of patience. So let's see, uh, who else has questions? Jane says, I know between 7 to 7.30, not a minute past this time, and Ava's limit, and I do not miss that window at all. I am still struggling for at least three weeks with bedtime at 19 months at this point. 
uh, hold on let me open it. it feels like a regression we have the pre-sleep routine and I have all the times written down for the nights and bedtime and it became a trend of this new bedtime okay so um, if you're putting your little one down at 7 7 30 that's a pretty good time if you are struggling um, I'm not understanding if you're struggling putting her down, putting Ava down at that time, or if you're putting her at that time and it's taking her a while to fall asleep. So um, let me know or message me. Oh, wait, you wrote something else. Can you modify any of the plans that you offer on your site or it's just listed? Of course, I modify all of my packages. The ones that I have listed are my most popular ones from the families that requested them, but I do custom tailoring to what you need. I work on all different budgets. So it's just, you know, how much hands-on you would like me to be and how you work best learning so some families prefer for me to come to their home and help them with the sleep training that way I've done sleepovers where I actually sleep over your house and I help you that way in the middle of the night so or I've done Skype calls because um, some parents they can learn just by talking uh, without me actually being there present so there are different ways that we can work together on that uh, Angelica says so I guess watching TV iPad right before I put him to bed is a no-no no no Angelica <laughs> we don't want to do that I know that you know it's, it's again I it, it's quite common that um, we feel as though watching TV sitting and watching cartoons is bonding time with our kids it's not and you know it's not. You're just tired from your hectic day at work, maybe your boss is an asshole, and you just need some time to yourself, and this is your way of relaxing with your little one because you're so exhausted during the day. And by the time you come home, you really don't know what to do. So you just wanna you know, veg out in front of the TV and just snuggle and get hugs and just relax that way. But that's not bonding time, and we all know that. So sitting and watching TV, mm -mm -mm -mm. what I would recommend is you can read a book. You can read my book. <laughs> um, you can write a book. You can color. You can play with blocks, sing songs, talk about your day, ask them how their day was. But don't ask them how they're like if they're if they can talk, and don't ask them how their day was because they're not going to say anything. They're going to say. Oh, it was okay. You want to ask them details. You want to ask them, you know, what new dance moves did you learn today in gym class? Or what new math problems did you learn today in math class? You know, be, be specific. What did you learn in art class? What kind of projects are you working on now? Did you make any new friends? What are you and your friends talking about? You know, like, get in the conversation with them. If they're little, then you can, you know, if they can't talk yet, then just play with them. But in a way that they are showing you how to play. So it's called, it's like shadowing. So your little one would, for example, let's say you're playing blocks. So they would hand you a block and then you would play with them that way as opposed to you handing them a block. So you really want them to be in charge of the moment of that. But no TV. Mm -mm -mm. So Jane says, um... I don't feel guilty about not spending time with her every night because the sleep is much more important to me. Yes. So you can always see the thing is, is we feel so thank you guys for liking this. We feel so guilty as parents nowadays because we want the best for our kids. And we do that by working like dogs and then by the time we come home it's bedtime and we want to spend time with our little ones, but that's not realistic they're not fully present in the moment when you're playing with them. They're either jacked up on adrenaline because they haven't seen you in a while and then it's gonna take them forever to fall asleep and then the next day, they're just gonna be groggy and have more tantrums or they're just gonna be kind of like in jet lag uh, syndrome the entire time. They're gonna be woozy, they're not really you know, in the moment with you. They're not enjoying you being as the parent, even though you feel, and they're with you, but it's not the same thing as if they're fully rested. I mean, think of it as yourself. If you haven't gotten enough sleep, and then someone tells you, 
oh, you know, let's go out to a party. You're not going to get up and want to go get dressed and look your best and then, you know, leave. You're probably going to tell them hell no or you're going to waltz in kind of grunting and then it'll take you time to get uh, kind of, you know, into the moment and getting ready and looking your best and getting dressed and then going outside. So it'll take you some time to get adjusted to that and that's kind of what happens with our little ones is that either it'll take them time to kind of wake up and snap out of it but snapping out of it meaning that they're going to go into an adrenaline rush or they're just really not going to want to do it and you'll have tantrums because they're going to want to sleep so that nobody likes that you don't want to have tantrums right before bedtime you really want it to be as easy peasy as possible and you don't want to have to create anxiety for yourself because you're having you know maybe a stressful day at work but you want it to be as easy peasy as possible so I'm seeing that we're getting lots of more people on please share this video right now you could share it right in the link below so we can get more people so I'm seeing that you guys are doing that because we're getting a lot more people on here and I love it we're talking today about um, one of the main reasons and why your child doesn't sleep at night and that is because you don't know the difference between tired versus overtired cues so i went through that before um let's see what time it is like half an hour ago <laughs> while wow, time is flying by so if you are just signing on um watch the replay afterwards if you have missed this video and you are just watching the replay hi <laughs> so um if you have any questions feel free to comment um afterwards and you can share this video with your friends right now or afterwards too so right now i'm just answering some questions okay um esther says the problem is that no matter what time i put him to bed he will still be awake before 7 a.m he still doesn't sleep through the night that's why i never okay no one to put him down to bed so the fact um anywhere between six and seven is a really good time to wake up you don't really want to go later than that but if you're having a problem um having him sleep through the night then we need to really kind of go more into detail in what is happening and that is most likely a reflection of uh, his day sleep as well so even if you keep the same bedtime every day that means nothing to me that means nothing to your little one it means nothing to their biological system if it's not balanced with their day sleep meaning the time that they wake up the time that their naps are and if they have any associations it's not going to help you no matter how many times you put them down to sleep every single night at the same time so you need to have it balanced so a new has um, a question let's see any tips for getting a four month old off the passy she wakes up at midnight and 3 a.m and needs the passy back in or needs to be nursed so um you can still keep the pacifier on you unless it becomes very tedious and you become like a replugger every single time that it falls out so if it does fall out and she needs to have a uh, some sort of a sucking which that is usually what happens when they need to be nursed consistently or they need the pacifier then um you can start to figure out on how to wean off of it but usually with pacifiers you just quit them cold turkey it is normal to still be feeding at night up until nine months old um, usually if it's past that it's for a medical reason so don't be nervous on still keeping at least two feeds for your little one up until that time usually by nine months they should be down to one feed but it's still normal at four months to give them a feeding at least two times um, two times during the night but you want to have them scheduled so you don't want to when they wake up just to continuously giving them a feed because then it just becomes a habit as opposed to um, a um, it, it becomes more of a want as opposed to a need so that's what happens so you don't want that and if you have any other questions feel free to reach out to me thanks guys for liking this and for sharing the video let me see what else you have hi Masha let's see um, what other questions and then I gotta go to bed <laughs> okay so Jane says my nanny is useless oh that's nice <laughs> and st staring at the clock waiting to leave um, it's a mess she wants nothing to do with the nighttime help which is really more difficult unfortunately tell your nanny that you hired her she works for you and she has to help you with the nighttime sleep if not, peace. No, I'm kidding. Just be sweet with her. Explain to her the process and what you want to do. I've worked with so many nannies and um, 
you know, the moms together because it's a team effort. So if she is doing a wonderful job with your little one during the day, talk to her, explain to her the process. Um, if your nanny is of a Russian descent, most likely like us, um, you know, I'm Russian too, they have a more older mentality in how they put the child to sleep. So it would mean that they would need to rock them, that they would need to hold them, that they would need to do something a little more, you know, body oriented to help them fall asleep. And we know that that can create an association, a crutch. And then you are gonna be the one waking up at two, three, four, five, six in the morning, trying to put your little one to sleep, even though they're trying their best to help. So just by explaining to your nanny the what your plan, what you wanna do, um, kind of walk her through it, that can help a lot. And um, if not, tell her the sleep specialist at home. <laughs> or just have her give me a call. So um, yeah, mm -hmm. that should be good for you. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, Anna, you're on a roll. Okay, at what time is best to schedule a baby's last day nap so that it's not too late but not too early? I read somewhere that by 5 p.m. the baby should be already awake from their last nap. Usually by 4. Um, it depends on, I can't quite remember how old your little one is, but I think they're on three naps a day. So usually between 3.30, 3 to 4, um is a good time to kind of schedule a third nap. So yeah, if they're on a three nap schedule, you would want them up by five. If they're on a two nap schedule, you want them up by four to protect bedtime. Angelica says he's two, he naps at the same time every day and goes to sleep at the same time. So I guess my times are not right. Um, that might be, I wouldn't um, you know, kick yourself in the behind with that um, just try and keep a diary check his tired cues again this is why this video is so important knowing his tired cues knowing your child's tired cues versus over tired cues so I guess I'm cracking up people today because I'm seeing lots of laughters <laughs> but you want to know his tired cues and then you can tweak the time according to that use the time on the clock as kind of your focal point on where to start and then um, check his tired cues to see when that is hi Tina Marie thanks for joining so if you guys are just joining right now I'm answering some questions we were talking about earlier on one main reason on why your child doesn't sleep at night and understanding their tired cues versus overtired cues is something significant so if you are just signing on I spoke about that at the beginning of the video so make sure that you watch the replay the last like I don't know 15 minutes I keep looking back because that's where my clock is um, I've been answering questions so let's see Miriam hi Miriam so you have an awesome question let me see here how many questions are here whoa we're on a roll tonight okay um, I put my kids to bed every day at 7 to 7 30 however my four-year-old never sleeps not during the day for a nap and not at night is there anything I can do to get her to fall asleep she's singing while I'm watching this video Ah, so wow, she's singing. It's ten thirty nine, girl. She should be sleeping. <laughs> Put her on. <laughs> Maybe I can sing something. Uh, no, that'll just make her deaf. We don't want that to happen. <laughs> okay, so um, if you put her down to seven seven thirty, does your four year old still take naps? So you said that um, she has a hard time with taking a nap. How is your environment? You want to make sure that you have blackout curtains, a white noise machine, that you are sticking to your guns when you are putting her down for her naps. You don't want to be all over the place with the times. So keep a schedule, keep a diary for yourself. If after a week you've tried it all, and it's still not working, Miriam, contact me because then we need to put something in order because having a four-year-old up watching my video, even though I love it, at 10.30 at night is a no-no. We need to be in sleep. So contact me then. Okay, let's see. Katie says, my eight-month-old will not sleep past 5.30 a.m. He is on two naps and goes to bed between 6 and 6.30. Should I fix wake times? No, I won't fix them. At that age... Um, anywhere between 5.30 and 7 o'clock is a good time to wake up. He might just be an early riser at this point at 8 months and then the older that he's going to be, it's going to go a little uh, later. So don't start playing around with things. Um, if he's sleeping you know, relatively through the night 
and he's having really nice naps, don't touch anything. Just keep it the way that it is. If he starts waking up in the middle of the night or his nap starts to suck, then you would want to tweak the times on that. But 5.30 is a pretty decent time for some kids that are early risers naturally. So I wouldn't do anything. Um, Jane says, I put her down and it's taken two plus hours. Okay, Jane, there needs to be something worked on your schedule. Contact me, okay? Hi, Galena. Okay, uh, let's see who else. Okay, when I try to push bedtime later, he wakes up earlier. So you would, if that happens and you're trying to push bedtime later, they wake up earlier, you need to see that they are getting the quantity of sleep that their body needs also. Because for some kids, um, depending on you know how many hours that they slept, because if they're sleeping too much during the day, that means that they're taking the hours that they need to sleep at night and they're, replen they're using them up during the day. So we don't want that to happen. We need to have balance. So we need to have the amount of quantity and quality of hours during the day and the quantity and quality of hours at night. So that's what I would want you to look into Katie Belmar. Okay, Jane, you said you're okay, you're ready for an up. I'll be writing one soon. <laughs> okay, Elena has an awesome question. Um, my baby was, hold on, let me open this. Okay, so my baby was sleeping great when she was seven to eight months, going to sleep at seven to 7.30, waking up at 4 a.m. or later to nurse and back to sleep. She even slept, in, but now at 10 and a half months, uh, her sleep has gone downhill. She now wakes up every three hours and won't go back to sleep until she's fed, nursed. I think she's eating less during the day. Okay, so the first thing that I would want you to do is, Alina, is to, because she's seven to eight months, is to knock out these night feeds. The reason why she's eating less during the day is because her body's eating 24 hours a day. Now imagine if you were waking up and you were going and getting yourself a dinner plate out of your refrigerator in the middle of the night several times at night and eating during the day as well. You won't be eating as much. So her caloric intake during the day is less because she's eating literally 24 hours. So once you eliminate the night feeds, that should... In, that should have her caloric intake during the day increase significantly. It might take a little bit of time, so I would do a gradual process. I wouldn't necessarily, you know, quit cold turkey on it, but I would um, at least put a plan together on how you would night wean her off first and then put a plan together on how you're going to help her sleep through the night. So if you have any questions or you want to know on how to get started on that, just message me and then I can help you put something together with it. Thanks guys for liking this. Oh, this is so much fun. Share, share, share. Okay, Angelica has, I do all of that, I promise you, <laughs> but I've created a monster. He flips out without the iPad. Okay, um, we're going to have to do something a little creative then for toddlers. If he's having, if he's flipping out without the iPad, I would want to become a little more creative in what else does he like to do. I mean, there has to be something that he likes to do besides being on, you know, an electronic an electronic piece. So, is there a book that he likes? Maybe you want to make a book with him. You know, get some construction paper and draw a book together. Like my six-year-old likes to do that. He actually made a folder out of construction paper and then he puts in you know like different types of artwork that he does or he comes up with stories do that with him there's um you know lots of fun projects you can do go on pinterest and just type in bedtime activities for toddlers or for you know for babies and you'll come up they'll have i promise you an abundant amount of information you can tell him that the batteries broke that it fell make up something be a creative mama that you are but no electronics before bed because that is what is also making sure that he is not falling asleep properly so you know do something more uh, relaxing right before bedtime let's see who else hi Michelle hi Abigail okay uh, Angelica asks, if he watches a short show, it's much easier to put him to bed. No TV. 
No TV. Understand? Okay. That's it. <laughs> That's all I got for you today. Okay. So, Abigo says this looks like my kind of topic. I have to watch this over. Okay. Esther. Um, should they always wake up the same time during naps? And if they don't, should we make, should we wake them up? Okay. So you want to keep the same time when you're putting them down, but waking up can be a little iffy. You want to have certain times, depending on the age, on, you know, that they're not pushing the nap too late because then what happens is it mess it screws up the rest of the schedule so you need to protect bedtime so there's a balance within the sleep schedules that you do and that's what I specialize in so um, keeping the same times usually they don't really pass longer than that you want to have make sure that each nap except for the third nap if they're taking three naps the first two naps should be at least an hour long and then the third nap can be anywhere between 30 to 40 minutes so making sure that they're having at least one hour for the first and for the second nap because the first nap is mental restoration and then the second nap is physical restoration so the third nap is just a bridge to help them survive from the second nap to bedtime and that's really it so they don't collapse so uh, making sure that they're getting at least um, one hour is good on that part. Most kids don't really surpass it. If they pass and their naps are too long, that means that their nighttime sucks and that they're having lots of night wakings and they're making up for that sleep during the day. That's how you know that they're sleeping too much. And then what we have to do is we have to recreate the whole schedule for them. So if that is your case, let me know. I'll put something together for you so then we can work together on getting your little one sleeping bird beautifully. So, oh, I'm parched from talking so much. Um, let's see, Masha says, is 12 hours by 12 weeks actually possible? <laughs> for some kids it is. I'm not that fond of it because it's very black and white. Um, our kids are gray. So I don't really follow that book precisely. Um, I haven't had many people that had a lot of uh, positive feedback from it. I mean, it works for some people. Um, it doesn't work for everybody, again, because it's very black and white. And if you have um, a child, <laughs> it's most likely that you have a gray area. And then what happens if your little one doesn't fit in that little box? You freak out because you don't know what's going on. So we don't want that to happen. We want you to feel empowered when you're putting your little one to sleep. So I would use that book as a, a kind of like a guide, like um, a tool to understand sleep, to understand where to start. But if something falls out of place or you don't feel um, kind of confident in what you're utilizing is probably not for you. So again, remember that there's a gray area. Most of these books are black and white. Actually, all of these books are black and white. They don't really give a gray area and that's where I come in. I help you with the gray area. And all these books work on methods. So remember how I always keep drilling and drilling and drilling that sleep training is not a method. It's like 10% of what it really even is focusing on. That sleep training really is based off of the right amount of sleep at the right time and then in the right place. Hint, that's my program, the sleep trifecta. So that's what we would be working on. But if you're reading these books, you know, just keep an open mind. Don't feel that you need to follow it to the T and if it doesn't work out for you, that there's no hope for yourself. So let's continue. Okay. Jane says, yes, she is so pro rocking when I say no. Ah. <sighs> Okay, uh, Miriam says she's in daycare during the day. Okay, so when you're in daycare, you um, there's only so much that you can do with naps because they're in daycare. But you want to at least get a sleep diary and find out if she's sleeping, how much she's sleeping, and then you would want to figure out the bedtime for that then. So let's see how many questions I have. Okay, I have a couple of more, and then it's bedtime for you guys. Okay, uh, Victoria says... My 13-month-old used to sleep relatively well, but lately he wakes up at 2 and he's up until 4.30. Bedtime is around 8 p.m. with a bottle. Wowzer. So I would look into 
um, his napping schedule and bedtime is pretty late so I would um, increase that if he's awake for that long of a period I need to see what's going on with their, his schedule so there's something that's missing and probably it's not um, he's not receiving the proper amount of sleep during the day as well and bedtime is a little too late so I would bump that up my pleasure Alina okay um, she says it just sucks because she used to be so good when she was like eight months old and now at 10 months it's a total SHIT show <laughs> at night I have no idea what changed the kids things change um, I don't want you ever to think that once your child is sleep trained that when they hit a developmental milestone that there won't be a bump in the road what happens is after they're trained they already have the foundation set so when they do hit a milestone that you're not starting from scratch it's kind of like and you're not retraining them it's more as in um, a tweak that's really what it is so they might be out of place for maybe a week or two but if they have a foundation set in place that you originally did and you're following the proper procedure with their schedule their environment then things are good so um, I would just evaluate Alina on what has changed between the 8 to 10 months because that is a short time frame. Eight months is when separation anxiety peaks and then by 10 months it kind of subsides. So I would just kind of focus on that part on what has changed. Hi Anna, uh, we got a lot of Annas on tonight. Okay, so we got, hi Zarina, we have two more questions. Um, okay, so Angelica says, I told them, all of that it's like you read my mind so funny okay everyone. okay cool um what do you mean angelica by how do you recreate recreate what what did i say oh i hope my phone doesn't die um okay so if you fell asleep <laughs> Which probably you guys did because it's already 11 o'clock. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning. <laughs> okay. So that is it for tonight. Make sure you share this video before you go to sleep. It was an awesome talk. We had so many people on tonight. I think I hit my record for um, the first couple of uh, videos that I did. And that was tonight. Oh, recreate the schedule sleep. Well, that's what I do darling so just contact me and we'll put something together the feeding schedule um, a bunch of everything that we were talking about so don't stress out about it just contact me PM me or um, email me or call me you got my info um, reorganized refreshed <laughs> I love that it says if a child is having a hard time falling asleep it is possible that they are overstimulated and need more to wind down like maybe providing a massage and calm music or is that a crutch only once in a while no that's not a crutch um, if they need something to wind down a massage calming music that's totally fine that's awesome to do something like that that does not turn into a sleep crutch what a crutch is is something that you are using it could be a prop meaning a human prop meaning yourself like rocking um, feeding uh, holding sitting next to your little one until they fall asleep so what you want to do is you don't want them to fall asleep while you are using the crutch so those pieces like massage and calming sleep music is not considered a crutch um, okay, so Angelica, I'll be waiting for your message. Sweet dreams, everyone. Thank you so much for liking. I loved all the smiley faces. I'm happy that I was cracking you guys up because, you know, we need to laugh. We need to get those laugh. Oi! Sorry, my phone just fell. We need to get those laugh lines. <laughs> okay, so sweet dreams, everyone. Love you. And I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, oh, before I go, don't forget to do your task for um, this week on... 
hashtagging it's all about love this week is um, asking your significant other on a date or having them ask you on a date so at the beginning of the video I was saying that I asked my hubby on a date yeah I did so we're gonna be going out this Sunday night and I am going to be posting some pictures if he lets me so sweet dreams everyone and make sure that you are doing this task with me I don't want to do this by myself it's not fun okay if I'm doing it by myself make sure you're doing it with me Okay, sweet dreams. Love you. Bye.